Hey, what's going on? It's Edith and Abelard. I'm super excited to show you this new tutorial on how to use Video.js as well as Greensock's Tween Lite and Tween Max library. Now, if you're not familiar with either Video.js or Tween Max, you're going to absolutely love this video. Video.js is a great HTML slash flash backup um, video player. Now, if you know anything about HTML5 video, you know it still has its own little bugs. So having a flash backup just allows you to protect yourself later on. Greensock, on the other hand, is an absolutely great tweening library that was once just for ActionScript. Now, if you know anything about Flash and, and programming ActionScript 2 and 3, you know that Tween Max and Tween Lite were the absolute best ways to tween anything, at, you know, at least from the coding perspective in Flash. So the team at Greensock actually bought that imported it over to JavaScript. So now you have that same library with the same methods now in JavaScript. So if you're familiar with it from ActionScript, literally nothing has changed. Minus, of course, how you attach movie clips. So this time you just have to grab um, a DOM object. So what we have here, I've already brought everything into Texture Packer. You already know the deal. No project gets started or ends without Texture Packer, especially if it's on the web and especially if it's mobile. Um, maybe later on we'll do another video and this time we'll show you how to use Texture Packer specifically for Corona, which I absolutely love. And when you see those tutorials, you'll see how much, how passionate I'm about that too. But it also works great with Quick, which is actually also another Corona tool. Quick is actually a Photoshop plugin that allows you to, to create some fun interactive things in Photoshop and export it out directly to Corona. And of course, you're not going nowhere in 3D without Unity 3D. So Texture Packer, since I've been using it probably for the last year, has grown in leaps and bounds. And I can't, you know, stop talking about this thing to just about anyone and everyone I see. So if you haven't checked it out yet, check out Code and Web and definitely pick up Texture Packer. And it's not expensive either, especially for the, the, the quality you get. So without further ado, Let's talk about a one feature that I absolutely, absolutely love. And that's actually this folder feature. So you see I have sprites, images, and then everything broken down. Well, if I open up my folder structure, this is my folder. And what I did is actually I grabbed the sprites folder and just plopped it in here. Now, the, now the great thing about that is, is no matter what happens, if I update, let's say we add files, actually, let's just duplicate this. We duplicate a file, you notice that it gets duplicated within here. So what you really have here is, is a watch folder. So you save out your texture packer file. Anytime you open up texture packer or it's currently open, it'll watch this folder and anything you add in there, it'll automatically add, you know, compress and do the whole nine for it. So it's an absolutely great way to work with sprites. It gives you access to them individually. So, you, you know, if you need to grab any of these, um, for example, these buildings need to be tiled and you know you can't tile in the sprite sheet. So I can still grab them separately if I need to, but then I still have them packed in if I just want to use them for one specific area. So that's definitely a feature to look out for whenever you're using it. And another really great feature is, is what I would like to call the mobile fire. And what this is, is this auto SD. What it'll do, it'll scale all of your well, it won't scale all of your images. It'll scale the final sprite sheet itself down to, you know, whatever size you want it. So this SD, you, you see it has an empty list. If we click here, we have a scale feature and extension. So what you can do is choose a, um, you can choose a scale and then you can force it to use whatever scale you want. So if you want to see it for here, you can, um, you know, pay close attention to the actual size. Um, both the um, resolution and the file size. You can take this down to let's say 0.5 and you can see it automatically scales everything down for you. Now, this is absolutely great, and especially if you're in a mobile space. If you're doing mobile websites, this is a tool that's absolutely bar none, um, the most useful thing that you can use. Um, because otherwise, what you're forced to do is, is scale down tools or even worse than scaling down each image separately you might end up having to use the full image at its full scale for, for mobile, which we know mobile devices 
really don't maximize this anyways. So this works both in, in Corona as well as HTML5. It's an absolutely great feature to limit the amount of data sent to the user. All right, so what I have here set up is just really simple. I have video JS already um, being pulled in from the CDN. I have our CSSs. I have Bootstrap sitting here. Really don't need this, but we'll leave it in here anyways. And I have our good old friend jQuery. So first thing I want to do is, is just start setting up the page. Actually, before we do that, I want you to see the design. This is what the, the design was coming out of. I did this in Illustrator. So this is what our design is going to roughly look like. So what I like to do is, is have these images already in our folder. And this is our background. So what I like to do is, is actually take this and just overlay the whole thing over our HTML file. So that's what we have here. So what this gives us is just a basic or a rough outline of just about where the elements are. So now when we add our elements, we can just kind of place them in, you know, just on the rough areas and then we can take it from there. And all I did here is, is in our main CSS file, I actually just layered up. Now this is HTML5 or CSS3 features. I, I have actually multiple backgrounds dropped on top of each other. So we have the video background, excuse me, we have the paper background with the city on top of it. So let's get started. Let's just create a few IDs because I know we're gonna we're going to have to place them. So let's start with alien. Let's say alien one. We'll keep everything. Alien one. We'll just duplicate. I don't remember how many aliens we have, but for now we'll just duplicate a few of them. If we don't need them, we'll clean them out later. Three, four, five. Now this is strictly for positioning. The way we're going to do all of our alien view is actually from I'm using Sprite Sheet, the Sprite Sheet that Texture Packer put out. Now what I did was is I actually I, I saved the Sprite Sheet here in the image folder and I saved the CSS file in the CSS folder. Now one thing that you might have to do is is here this image may not be set to the correct relative path. So you might just have to come in here and um, set that. I had to add this dot, 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 the dot, dot slash image um, folder just so it knows exactly where the, the sprite sheet is. But after that, everything else is, is set and ready to go. One thing to note, because I added the sprites folder, it automatically created images dash alien. So this is actually the folder name. So if you're wondering where your sprites are, if you have a uh, you know, great IDE like PHP Storm and you're wondering how come um, your, your file name isn't loading, it's because if it's in a folder, it's going to append or prepend the, the actual folder name in there. So all we have to do now is, is come in here. We'll just use simple p tags and set a class of sprite. Now this is why I absolutely love on PHP Storm. Um, so we know it's going to be images, and now all of our sprites, uh, well, sprites, all of our CSS classes, um, IDs and um, classes all show up. And this is absolutely the best. So if you haven't picked this up, this is another tool that's absolutely useful. So we're just going to drop a few of these in here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I was just looking here real quick. Let this thing load up. It's a bit long. All right, I know it's probably killing me. All right, yeah, that was. All right, so what happened here? Now. If you're familiar with using a lot of these libraries, whether it's HTTP or HTTPS, you end up having to use multiple, um, you know, multiple scripts and, and kind of check to see, you know, which which server you're on. So by removing them, you can kind of bypass that a little bit and allow it to 
use it, you know, to, to figure out what it currently has and use that. Now, because I'm not using a, um, a local host right now, it doesn't actually understand what this comment is. So I just drop an HTTP in front of it and you're good to go. All right, so that's the end of this video. And in our next video, we're going to talk about perfect pixel placement. Now this technique is absolutely great for getting in about one to two pixel ratio of the design. Now, this technique is one that we use all of the time. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about what it used to look like when you had to go back and forth and, and change in code versus seeing in the view. So definitely this is going to be a time saver, which means a money maker. A squad is Passion47. Check us out at passion47.com. And definitely hit me up on either Twitter, Google Plus, or if you're watching this on YouTube, check me out on YouTube. And I'm out.